Hiram Maxim was a late 19th century rival to brilliant engineers like Thomas Edison and the Wright brothers. His many inventions included a mousetrap and even an early aircraft which might have made his name and fortune if it had flown. In 1883, he patented a new fully automatic machine gun, an invention inspired by direct personal experience. Maxim's eureka moment came while at rifle practice with friends in Savannah, Georgia. The thumping recoil was giving him painful kicks in the shoulder, and he was getting tired of doing all the reloading himself. It suddenly occurred to Maxim to use one problem to solve the other. Could the force of the recoil be used to reload the weapon automatically? Back at the drawing board, Maxim found an ingenious way to do it. The key components are the barrel and the bolt. When the cartridge is fired, both are forced backwards by the recoil. Then the barrel is pushed forwards again by a spring, flipping out the spent cartridge. Meanwhile, the bolt is pushed forwards by another spring, loading and firing the next shot. Thanks to recoil, the gun reloads and fires itself with no outside help. Now, Maxim was in the machine gun business. A friend told him, If you want to make a pile of money, invent something which will enable the Europeans to cut their throats with greater facility. So, Maxim moved to London and unleashed a sales offensive that matched brilliant engineering with flamboyant public relations. A series of high-profile publicity stunts spread news of the machine gun around the world. Power brokers from all nations were invited to fire the weapon for themselves. And one story above all became part of the Maxim folklore. He claimed that his machine gun could chop down trees. Deep in the woods of rural England, Former Special Forces machine gunner Bob Podesta aims to find the truth about Maxim's story by trying it for himself. What do you think of these ones, Bob? Uh, too straight. You leave them leaning over a bit. Yeah, get one with a bit of top heavy on it. He'll be assisted by Sean Hindle, also an ex-machine gunner in the British Army. Ah, what do you reckon? This looks like a good one. Yeah, it's got uh, plenty of tension on it, though, is that way it's yeah. hanging. Yeah. Now all they need is a machine gun. This is a 1916 Vickers gun, a British Army variation on Hiram Maxim's design built by his London business partners. It's capable of firing 450 rounds per minute. But is that enough to topple a mighty Scots pine? Podesta aims to maximise his chances with a methodical approach based on years of experience. Firing in short bursts is the Army-approved machine gun technique. Continuous fire could overheat and distort the barrel, affecting accuracy. But Podesta must be careful. A rotating wheel in the firing mechanism could easily smash his knuckles. Every round is striking home. The thumping recoil of the barrel is clearly visible at the muzzle. Podesta ups the firing rate, sensing victory. Success, and they fired just 470 bullets. Well, done. The potential effect on any enemy is only too evident. In 
In the decades following 1887, Hiram Maxim sold his devastating new weapon to all the major powers. Then in 1914, Britain and France went to war with Germany. The rest of Europe and finally the United States were dragged into the conflict. This was the Great War, later known as World War I. Millions of men were mobilized. But despite the rise of the machine gun, vast infantries were still trained to attack with rifle and bayonet. Armies on both sides had the same objective, to cross the no man's land between the trenches and kill the enemy in close quarters combat. It might seem that soldiers attacking like this would be easy meat for a Maxim gun. But Bob Podesta aims to show that in battle, things are not so straightforward. I'm looking across uh, no man's land now, and I think the enemy's just about getting ready to attack. Strange looking enemy. Podesta's enemy is a battalion of 250 helium balloons. Like a First World War infantry company on the attack, they're arranged in rows, with each balloon two meters from its neighbor. Podesta decides on the most obvious defensive tactic. He sets up his Vickers gun directly opposite the attackers, on the other side of no man's land. Podesta has a single belt of 250 bullets, one for each balloon. The question is, how many can he kill? Enemy front! Firing now! Podesta gets his first kills, but this is no turkey shoot. Most of the bullets are finding empty space between the balloons. Podesta must take fresh aim at each single balloon, wasting precious time as he readjusts. And in a real battle, the enemy would be advancing towards him. What do you reckon? How many do you reckon I got? 30, 45, no more. Big gaps out there in them, but they're still going to be coming out. So there's loads left. This highly trained machine gunner has hit just 37 of the 250 targets. On July the 1st, 1916, the British and their allies commenced the Battle of the Somme with an attack across no man's land involving 200,000 men. A preemptive artillery bombardment was designed to destroy the German defences but the German machine gunners took shelter in deep bunkers, then moved rapidly into position. And by this stage of the war, they had developed highly effective machine gun tactics. Bob Podesta demonstrates why the placement of guns is a vital tactical decision. While the enemy regroups, the machine gun team moves to an alternative firing point on the flank. The difference is immediately apparent. The balloons line up 50 deep behind each other, creating a far greater concentration of targets to hit. Now the true power of the machine gun is unleashed. The result is carnage. Podesta is even able to shoot several balloons with a single bullet. This time round, 250 bullets make 240 kills. When a machine gun sights the enemy from the flank, there's no escape you've got a, a much easier target because it looks as if the, um, the enemy is, is grouped together that much closer. And uh, you can probably take out ten times more of them than uh, you would do if they were coming from the front. In World War I, 
the Germans could protect a section of trench with just two machine guns on the flanks. Each gunner swept a predetermined arc as close as he dared to his own lines. When the enemy attacked, the gunners did not open fire straight away. They waited until the attackers entered the killing zone. The interlocking arcs of fire created an impenetrable wall of lead. The British infantry were utterly decimated by machine gun fire from the flanks. <laughs> 